and let's go. Let's start the second and last session of the morning. So our first speaker is Francesco. He's going to be talking about quantum communication. So please take it away. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, this talk is based uh, on a joint work with uh, Parzin Salek, that uh, is uh, also here at TQC conference, uh, Vittorio Giovannetti and uh, Ludovico Lami. Uh, in this talk, I will uh, talk about the combined effects of the photon loss and the phasing. Um, photon loss and the phasing have been extensively studied in the literature, but only separately. Uh, they, uh, the literature lacks uh, a complete understanding of uh, the combined effect of uh, loss and, and the phasing in uh, optical systems. In our work, we try to fill this gap, and uh, we provide application to quantum communication and error correction. The outline of the talk is as follows. We give a brief introduction to, to continuous variable systems. Then uh, I talk about the model to describe uh, loss and the phasing. And then we talk about uh, no-go uh, results for communication and the error correction. So continuous variable systems are basically quantum optical systems. Um, here, the role of uh, one qubit is uh, played by the so-called so one mode. Is basically one mode is basically one qubit with d equal to infinite. Is a uh, an infinite dimensional qubit. The Hilbert space of one mode is the span of uh, cat zero, cat one, and so on. Uh, these uh, are called the POC states. Cat zero is the state with zero photons, the vacuum state. Cat one is the single photon states, and uh, cat d is the state with d photons. So uh, now let us talk about uh, photon loss. Um, you can imagine that uh, you have uh, an optical device, for example, an optical optical fiber, and uh, you can uh, in, you input uh, a single photon in the into the optical fiber. This photon has, has, has uh, some probability lambda to be to be transmitted to the output, and some probability one minus lambda to be lost in the environment. And uh, we call this uh, probability that a single input photon reaches the output the transmissivity. Is a parameter in zero one is a probability, and uh, in order to model the the process of loss in optical systems, people use uh, the pure loss channel. It is uh, a continuous variable channel defined uh, as follows. It acts uh, by mixing the input state rho in a beam splitter of transmissivity lambda with uh, an environment state initialized in the vacuum. By tracing out the environment, you obtain the output of the pure loss channel. Um, so okay, a beam splitter is basically a semi-reflective mirror. And um, uh, the pure loss channel is noiseless for transmissivity equal to 1, basically the identity channel. And it is completely noisy for transmissivity equal to 0. Just to forge our intuition, um, if you input uh, the single photon state uh, in the pure loss channel, then the output is uh, with probability lambda, the single photon state. And the, with probability one minus lambda, the photon is lost, so you have the vacuum. So this is the output of the pure loss channel when the input is the single photon state. Now let's talk about the phasing. The phasing uh, is a process that tries to uh, transform coherent superposition into classical probability mixture. And, um, uh, in order to model the process on, uh, of defacing in uh, optical systems, people use uh, bosonic defacing channel. It is parameterized by a parameter gamma uh, called the defacing strength. is a real parameter uh, positive. And uh, uh, the bosonic defacing channel is defined as follows. It takes uh, in input the density matrix uh, written uh, in Fock basis, and uh, it outputs uh, another density, density operator with uh, the off diagonal terms suppressed by this uh, exponential factor. Exponential factor. Um, and um, so um, uh, you can see that uh, it is uh, noiseless uh, for uh, the facing equal to zero, while uh, it's a full defacing for uh, gamma equal to infinity. Uh, the state becomes di diagonal 
in POC basis when gamma is equal to infinity. And um, uh, note that uh, the FOX states are left uh, unchanged by the action of uh, the, the, face, uh, bosonic, the facing channel. Okay, this is the definition of a bosonic facing channel. Uh, and um, okay, so um, these uh, two channels, uh, loss uh, and the facing have been extensively studied. And uh, uh, in our work, we study the combined uh, effect of uh, loss uh, and defacing. Uh, in principle, if you have, uh, for example, an optical fiber, uh, loss and defacing act, act simultaneously. You can imagine that you have uh, an optical fiber at, uh, at, the, at any position of the optical fiber, both uh, loss and defacing can act. So in principle, in order to model the loss, uh, the combined effect of loss and defacing, you have uh, a weird composition of uh, infinitesimal loss and infinitesimal defacing channels. But uh, fortunately, the pure loss channel and the defacing channel commute. So uh, um, in order to model the combined effect, their combined effect, you can uh, uh, act, uh, we can model it by uh, first the defacing and then the pure loss channel, for example, on the other way around. This is the definition of uh, uh, loss defacing channel. It is the composition between uh, pure loss channel and defacing channel. And uh, in our work, we want to study this channel, the uh, quant uh, at least the quantum, uh, quantum communication capabilities of this. Uh, let's recall some preliminary. Uh, given a quantum channel, you can always associate the Stein spring representation. Uh, so you couple your, the input state of the channel with a Stein spring unitary with uh, an, envi an environment state. And uh, if you trace out the environment, you obtain the channel. OK, instead of tracing out the environment, if you trace out the system, the output of the channel, you obtain another channel. This is called the complementary channel. It is the channel that maps the input of the system to the output of the environment. This is the definition of complementary channel. And uh, so the output of the complementary channel is the output of the environment. Now let's give the definition of anti-degradability. Um, uh, a channel is said to be anti-degradable if there exists a, another channel, A, such that the composition between A and the complementary channel is the channel. And um, um, in other words, uh, if a channel is anti-degradable, it means that uh, the environment has uh, more power than the system. Uh, this is because uh, uh, the environment can apply post-processing on uh, the output state to recover the same state of the system. So this is why the environment has more power than the system. And this is also the intuition be, uh, behind the no-go theorem for anti-degradable channels. Basically, if a channel is anti-degradable, okay, this is a known fact. If a channel is anti-degradable, then it does not admit uh, reliable protocols uh, with vanishing error for uh, to, to perform quantum communication and the error correction. This is formalized by saying that uh, the quantum capacity of anti-degradable channels is zero. OK, so anti-degradable channel, uh, communi quantum communication, the error correction uh, with vanishing error is impossible across anti-degradable channels. Just to forge our intuition, just give the sketch of the proof of, the, of this uh, result, just a rough idea. It's uh, because of uh, non-cloning theorem, basically. Because if there exists a strategy to correct the noise, encoding and decoding procedure to correct uh, the noise, then uh, also the environment can apply first the map mapping A and then the decoding to obtain the same state row. So you basically, you obtain a cloning machine. And uh, so this is a reason that is a contradiction. So this is the reason why that uh, uh, the noise of uh, anti-degradable channel cannot be corrected, a rough idea. So uh, let's give um, an example. The pure loss channel is anti-degradable uh, if and only if the transmissivity is in zero one alpha. This is intuitive because uh, the transmissivity is the probability that a photon is transmitted to the output, while one minus lambda is the probability that uh, it is transmitted to the environment. So uh, it's intuitive that this happens. And um, 
Okay, uh, the facing channel instead is never anti-degradable for all for any finite value of gamma. And um, by uh, combining these two facts, it uh, easily follows the this fact that uh, the loss the facing channel is anti-degradable if the transmissivity is in zero one alpha. This is a, a simple consequence of the, the first fact. And uh, okay. Uh, what about the other region when the transmissivity is strictly larger than one half? A um, few years ago, it was uh, conjectured that uh, also the converse is true. Basically, that the loss defacing channel is uh, anti degradable if and only if the transmissivity is in zero one half. This is, it was conjectured that this is uh, the only anti -degradability, anti degradability region of the loss defacing channel. And uh, in our work, we show that this is this conjecture is false, and uh, uh, indeed we we prove that uh, uh, for any value of the transmissivity, also for those larger than uh, one half, and all sufficiently large values of the, the facing strength gamma, the loss defacing channel is anti degradable. Uh, this uh, identifies uh, a large parameter region of the loss and defacing where uh, communication and error correction is. Uh, Impossible, and uh, um, now I can show you this uh, region uh, where uh, we put this uh, logo result for communication error correction. So uh, we put on the y-axis the transmissivity and uh, on the x-axis the defacing, parameterized as e to the minus gamma, just to have uh, a parameter between zero and one because gamma ranges from zero to infinity, to infinity, and um, the red region is the region where uh, the channel is anti-degradable. So the no-go result for communication error correction holds. If you have a, an optical devices and the, the, the facing and the, the loss uh, falls into this red region, that uh, you cannot you cannot have hope to to design a, a protocol for uh, communication. Uh, and uh, in the crossed red uh, green region. Um, Actually, there exists protocol to uh, perform uh, uh, quantum communication. So, um, okay, this is uh, our main result. And uh, okay, uh, now I want just to give uh, a sketch of the proof uh, uh, of this result because it, it introduces some tools that can be useful. Uh, okay, uh, so um, we start by okay considering the choice state of the channel. Here that is written generalized because we are in continuous variable systems. Generalized choice state of the channel. And uh, we use a known fact that uh, um, a channel is anti-degradable if and only if its choice state is true extendable. True extendable means, okay, the choice state is true extendable by definition if there exists a, a tripartite state, A, B1, B2, such that if you trace away either B1 or B2, you obtain uh, the choice state. So basically, look at this picture. You have um, the choice state is too extendable if there exists this uh, tripartite state, such that if you trace away B2, you obtain the choice state. Or if you trace away B1, you obtain still the choice state. And um, OK, so this is the definition of a uh, uh, true extension. And the uh, row is said the true extension of the choice state. So the uh, the idea is to find uh, an explicit construction of the, the true extension of the choice state of the loss defacing channel. Okay, this is um, uh, hard uh, in general. So uh, in order to uh, show this exam example, we uh, use uh, some tricks uh, by heuristic ba based on semi-definite programs. We find uh, an explicit uh, construction of a state such that uh, its partial traces with respect to B1 and B2 have the same diagonal and the same uh, zeros of the correct choice states, uh, but not the same uh, of the diagonal terms. So in order, okay, so we start from this state that is uh, uh, has some similarity to the correct choice state, and we want to apply some channels to, the, to it in order to uh, make it a good true extension. 
And uh, in order to do this, we employ the tool of uh, Adamard channel to adjust the off the other terms. Okay, um, let's give the definition of uh, Adamard channel. So, uh, given uh, a matrix M, possibly infinite dimensional, uh, an Adamard channel is a channel is a super operator parameterized by this matrix such that it acts as follows. It acts on uh, uh, basically, POC says as, as follows. Um, it uh, applies to at i bra j by multiplying uh, uh, the element i, I j of the matrix M. Okay, this is the definition of uh, uh, Adamar channel. Okay, in general, this is not a quantum channel. It depends on the matrix M. But uh, it turns out that uh, H M is actually a quantum channel if and only if the matrix M satisfies the following condition. M is positive semi-definite. This is the completely positive condition of the quantum channel. And um, the diagonal of M is equal to one. This is the trace preserving condition. So uh, the Adamard channel is a quantum channel if uh, and only if uh, M is positive as, uh, as one on the diagonal. So the, the trick that we use is to apply to this state tau uh, suitable uh, Adamard uh, channels, such that uh, if you trace away uh, B1 and B2, you obtain the correct choice state. So we, we construct the matrix M such that um, as the, uh, this operator has the correct partial traces. So it, it is defined in this way. Now the matrix M depends on the parameters lambda, uh, lambda and gamma, on the transmissivity and the, the facing strength. But uh, it, uh, we, we need still to require the positive semi-definite condition. And um, this is a, a true extension if uh, the matrix M is positive semi-definite, because uh, if this holds, then uh, HM, the other Mar channel, is a quantum channel. So you are applying uh, this quantum channel to this state. So this, this is a, a, a proper state. Otherwise, this is not guaranteed to be positive semi-definite. And uh, okay, so this, the uh, step three of our proof is to find the, par the parameter region of lambda gamma where this matrix is positive semi-definite. And uh, we do this by exploiting the so-called diagonally dominant criterion. Um, just to recall, the um, diagonally dominant criterion is a criterion to, uh, to uh, check if a matrix is positive semi-definite. And um, it says basically that uh, if uh, M is an Hermitian matrix, such that uh, for any matter, any value on the diagonal, it majorizes the sum of the other elements on the same column, like this eight is larger than two plus one. Um, this has to happen for any element on the diagonal. Then uh, it turns out that uh, the matrix is positive semi-definite. Okay. We employ this criteria on uh, our, our explicit construction of the matrix M to find the param parameter region where the mat matrix M is positive semi-definite. And uh, this uh, parameter region is exactly the parameter region where this, is, uh, this operator is actually a good true extension of the choice state. And so this parameter region is a parameter region where the channel is uh, anti-degradable. And uh, this is uh, how we construct this uh, red uh, region uh, where uh, um, these non go results on uh, quantum communication error correction holds. OK. So by summarizing, we have um, shown that uh, quantum communication is uh, impossible in a large parameter region of uh, loss and defacing. And uh, um, now we ask uh, what happens uh, if uh, Alice and Bob share a classical communication line. So imagine that uh, Alice and Bob share a classical communication line uh, are assisted by two-way classical communication. Then uh, uh, we can show that uh, um, basically if Alice and Bob are assisted by LOCC, local operation and classical communication, then quantum communication becomes uh, achievable for any value of the transmissivity and uh, for any values of the, the facing strength. And even if uh, you put uh, energy constraints at the, at the input of the channel. 
So uh, while an assisted quantum communication is uh, impossible in a large parameter region, uh, as, as, uh, quantum communication assisted by LOCC becomes uh, always achievable. And uh, this is formalized by saying that the two-way quantum capacity is strictly larger than zero. Actually, we found an explicit lower bound on the two-way quantum capacity. And um, OK, so in conclusion, in our uh, work, we provided uh, an analysis uh, of the combined effect of loss and defacing. Um, and uh, we proved the longer results for quantum communication and error correction in a large parameter region of loss and defacing. And uh, uh, OK, we, uh, this is um, a longer result. But we also found a positive result that uh, if you assist uh, quantum communication with uh, LOCC, then uh, the communication becomes uh, always possible. Okay. Thank you for the attention. Thanks for a nice talk, Francesco. We have plenty of time for questions. Any questions? Anyone there? Hi, uh, Francesco. Thanks for a very nice talk. So I just have a very uh, simple question, which is not quite covered here. So have, uh, does your result generalize straightforwardly to like multi-mode bosonic channels? OK, um, multi-mode. Uh, OK, so you, you mean also multi-mode pure loss channels, right? Yeah, so in quantum optical systems, oftentimes yeah. you consider many modes, even continuum, like right, sometimes. And Yeah. OK. Um... Actually, I uh, I didn't think about that, but uh, I mean, we uh, I, maybe it can be simple to generalize, but um, we can think about it later after the talk. Okay, but, very uh, good. Yeah, Thank I'm, you. I'm sure that uh, we can uh, try to answer this question. Any other questions? I can get the microphone. What a nice talk. I have a bit naive question. Um, in the your channel has a par two parameter lambda and gamma, right? So yes. what a relevant uh what a typical parameter region that we expect in communication? For example, you have uh, some for all lambda, you have a very large gamma such that the channel is degradable. But this is, is this, I mean, it's a channel is not the lost thing, but uh, has a very large defacing. Is this like you have some some concrete experiment or say concrete concrete channel in mind or, or you mean uh, uh, what's uh, a relevant you, parameter region? Yeah, I'm so sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm not sure if uh, but uh, in, in, in this parameter region, what do you think is uh, which part is most relevant? Ah okay, okay, because okay, yeah, you are saying there is this white region where it is not uh, clear whether the channel is uh, yes, yes, okay. yeah, yeah, what's uh, uh what uh, we conjecture that is the true anti-degradability region is this uh, uh, green, uh, the, the, um, I mean, uh, the lowest green line. Because, uh, OK, actually, you can uh, exploit semi-definite programs. Um, OK, uh, you can uh, embed your, your uh, um, channel in a finite dimensional channel, because uh, uh, the loss definition channel maps the first uh, defog states to the first defog states. So, uh, and this defines a QDIT restriction of the loss deficient channel. And uh, if uh, the if the loss deficient channel is antidegradable, also the QDIT restriction is antidegradable. And uh, so, if the QDIT restriction is not antidegradable, you can understand that the loss deficient channel is not uh, antidegradable. So, by using these semi-definite programs, uh, because the true extendability condition is a semi-definite program, so we can check numerically if the QDIT restrictions are uh, antidegradable or not. And, um, but of course, ju just when D is small, because uh, uh, for uh, numerical constraints. And this uh, green line is derived by taking uh, like uh, uh, small values of D, like D equal five or D equal six. And uh, it seems that uh, uh, going through, for example, D equal, D equal five or D equal six, this line do not change much. And so, uh, we think that uh, uh, yeah, it should be something like something like that. It uh, reaches a plateau in India at some point, but uh, it it is not. It just uh, ex experiment. I mean, numerical experiments. Uh. Further questions?
Oh, thank you very much. So you talked about some properties of quantum channels, which hold, uh, which are known in the finite dimensional spaces. But your uh, scenario is about the infinite dimensional ones. So I wonder the all the things hold uh, naturally if infinite dimensional spaces. Okay. Uh, what properties do you? Uh, for example, to? can we define the quantum capacity in the the natural way, and then the can we say that the every anti-degradable channel in the infinite dimensional space can have the zero quantum capacity? Yeah, it uh, it can be it can be proved. This uh, yeah. I mean, uh, th this was not the this was not the proof. It was just a catch of the idea behind the the proof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, everything can be defined uh, rigorously or for uh, continuous variable systems. Uh, for example, maybe uh, you mean also the choice state? I don't know. Uh, for example, the choice state. Uh, okay, the uh, the maximum entangled state does not uh, exist in uh, infinite dimension. But uh, uh, what I mean by generalized choice state is uh, uh, okay, it is defined like that. But this is uh, the so-called true mode squid vacuum state. Uh, with a finite uh, uh, squeezing parameter. Uh, Thank you. Right. <clears throat> yeah, my question is, can you describe more how the last part works? Like, is there a protocol that uses LOCC? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. So, um, uh, okay, we have... Uh, uh, there are um, many uh, okay, few strategies that uh, we come up with to make uh, quantum communication via LOCC possible. And for example, or what? Uh, okay, uh, okay, maybe I can tell you this first. Uh, first. Uh, there are these uh, multi multi rail strategies. Okay, uh, we encode. Uh, um, okay, if you if Alice encode. Uh, its quantum state, uh, a higher quantum state uh, in a subspace uh, with a fixed number of photons. Okay. And then, uh, since, okay, so for example, you encode zero in uh, uh, cat zero in uh, cat zero tensor cat one, and uh, cat one, you encode it in cat one tensor cat zero. Okay. This is an encoding. It's called the multi rail encoding. Uh, and, um, uh, Alice can uh, send this uh, encoded state in uh, multiple uses of the channel. And uh, Bob uh, can check if the, uh, if the loss happened or not by making a, a total photon number measurement at the output. And uh, if the output uh, of the fo total photon number corresponds to the total photon number of the input, then uh, and it will happen with some probability, then uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the um, you you have uh, basically you obtain uh, a state. Okay, this is with post outcome uh, uh, measurement. It happens with some probability. Uh, you obtain a, sh a shared state between Alice and Bob that it is uh, always uh, basically distillable. You can always uh, distill uh, ent entanglement uh, starting from these states after uh, this multi rail strategy. And uh, if you if you uh, transmit uh, state, if you transmit uh, uh, entanglement uh, states, I mean uh, maximum entanglement states, then you can also use quantum teleportation protocol to sense uh, qubit from Miles to Bob. Thanks. Let's thank Francesco again.